Trustee Zalik. Here. Trustee Geezer. Here. Trustee Fuzzoloni. Here. Trustee McCarthy. Here. Mayor Severino. Here. Please stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Their motion approved the minutes of our March 18th, 2024 Village Board meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee McCarthy, seconded by Trustee Frisloni. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Aye. Trustee Berger. Aye. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Frisloni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. Aye. Their motion to approve approval of the minutes of our March 18th, 2024 Special Workshop meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Geezer, seconded by Trustee Anselmo. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Trustee Berger. Aye. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Fuzzoloni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. Aye. Is there a motion to approve but not release the executive session minutes of our March 18, 2024 Village Board meeting? So moved. Second. second. Moved by Trustee Zalik, seconded by Trustee Fuzzoloni. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Trustee Berger. Aye. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Fuzzoloni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. Aye. <clears throat> Under our listening post, we have uh, a proclamation proclaiming April 2024 Chic Awareness Month, and that would be read by Trustee Geezer. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, proclaiming April 2024 <clears throat> Sikh Awareness Month. Whereas Sikhs have been living in the United States for more than 120 years, and during the early 20th century, thousands of Sikh Americans worked on farms and lumber mills and mines and on the Oregon, Pacific, and Eastern Railroad. And whereas Sikhism is the fifth largest religion in the world today, there are more than 25 million Sikhs worldwide and an estimated 500,000 Sikh Americans and 25,000 Sikh Illinois residents. And whereas Sikh Americans make rich contributions to the social, cultural, and economic vibrancy of the United States, including service as members of the United States Armed Forces and significant contributions to our great nation in agriculture, information technology, small businesses, the hotel industry, trucking, medicine, technology, and more. Whereas Sikh Americans distinguish themselves by fostering respect among all people through faith and service, and whereas the village of Carroll Stream seeks to further the diversity of its community and afford all residents the opportunity to better understand, recognize, and appreciate the rich history and shared experiences of Sikh Americans. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Frank Severino Sr. and the, village, the Board of Trustees in the village of Carroll Stream, DuPage County, Illinois, in the exercise of its home rule powers, does hereby proclaim April 2024 Sikh Awareness Month in Carroll Stream and encourages all residents to take time to appreciate the many contributions Sikh Americans have made to the success of our nation. And we have uh, a, a large group of uh, members of the Sikh community from Carroll Stream and surrounding areas joining us today. And uh, one of them will be giving some brief announcements to us. Uh, Guinea Jolly is here. And then afterwards, we'll uh, take a picture with him. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Honorable Mayor, the Village Trustees, and my fellow friends. It's my honor and privilege to be representing the Sikh community today. Uh, as an immigrant mother who adopted this country 41 years ago, this is a land which provided me with the opportunity, the freedom to raise my kids, to own my own businesses, and to be a part, a contributing part of you all. As a Sikh, the one, one the fundamental principle governs me. It's about ik. That means one. Ik onkar, oneness. Oneness pervades everywhere. The creator and his creation is no different in my eyes. That's the reason you may call him God, Allah, does not matter because we are all talking about the same creator, one creator. That's the reason 
that there is no room in my eye for any discrimination based on ethnicity, color, religion, because that goes fundamentally against my principle of oneness. So I acknowledge your presence. At the same time, I also know the light which is within me. Let me share a story with you. As a mother, my three-year-old son came home one day from preschool. And those were the one of those moments, as a parent, I became speechless. He looked at me and he said, Mom, why am I not white? And why are my color, eyes of my color not blue? As a mother, I couldn't give him a long lecture about genetics, right? I just, I just put my feet down and I looked at him. I hugged him. I said, I love you. You are like me and my, your dad. He looked at me, a very bright young kid, and he says, Mom, but wait a minute. Had you married a guy who was white and with blue eyes, could I have had blue eyes? Before I could say anything, he looked at me, he hugged me. Mom, don't worry, I love you. I don't want you to change my dad. Thank God. <laughs> but this experience told me that we all look at each other with the differences. The only way we can overcome it with love, trust, fundamental respect, and mutual respect for each other. So today, my friends, my trustees, I bow to your light. I bow to your experiences. I bow, Mayor, to your wisdom. And I also acknowledge the light within me. I offer you our hands of friendship. We are there to support this village any way we can as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as doctors, as lawyers, as hardworking family men and women. And we also hope that together we will make it a better, more, com you know, more compassionate world. Why Guruji ka khalsa? Why Guruji ki fateh? God bless America. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's all right with the mayor and the rest of the board if we could have uh, the community join us for a photo. And I'd like to. It's a state picture, right? <laughs> yes. That's my adopted daughter. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, thank you. Words to live by. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It would be my honor and pleasure to do anything for the village. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.
Madam Clerk, did we have anything that came in off over the internet? Nothing over the internet, Mr. Over the internet. So we have, uh, what? I got it. Somebody say something? Oh, okay. Uh, we have one address from the audience. Kaneta Barnes. I am Isaac Goodwill's sister. April 3rd will be two months. I don't know what we're waiting on, but we need the officers charged. I don't care about their names. We need them charged. Everyone's seen that video and it wasn't right. Charge the officers. I don't know what we're waiting on. Is we at the wrong place? Who do we need to go to? We're tired of waiting. Do what's right. Charge the officers. Are any other of the family members care to speak? Okay, we have a public hearing tonight. What? I'm good. Every time I think I'm hearing you talk to me. <laughs> okay, we have a public hearing tonight, public hearing budget meeting for 2024-25 fiscal year, May 1st, 2024. Motion to open the annual, uh, the public hearing for the annual budget for 24-25. Second. Moved by Trustee McCarthy, seconded by Trustee Geezer. Clerk, call a roll, please. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Trustee Berger. Aye. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Fuzzoloni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. Aye. Is there anybody here that would like to speak about the budget that was put in a newspaper? It's been on the, where well, I don't know, it's been every place. It's been on our website. Uh, we've had open meetings talking about it. Nothing? Is there a motion to close the public hearing? I make a motion to close the public hearing for the 2024-2025 fiscal annual budget. A second. Moved by Trustee Fruzzoloni, seconded by Trustee Anselmo? Nope. Or Trustee Zalix? Yep. Trustee Zalix. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo? Aye. Trustee Berger? Aye. Trustee Zalik? Aye. Trustee Geezer? Aye. Trustee Fruzzoloni? Aye. Trustee McCarthy? Aye. See, when you have a balanced budget, no one has any questions. Thank you. Thank you all for all the work that you did, all the staff, and, and all the meetings that we've had, uh, Bill, our manager, everybody. Thank you. I know it was a tough one. We've got less money, but we managed to stretch things out. And from all of us to everybody, thank you very much. Absolutely. Okay. Is there a motion to establish a consent agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee McCarthy, seconded by Trustee Fruzzoloni. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Trustee Berger. Aye. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Fruzzoloni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. Aye. Madam Clerk, would you please read what's on the consent Certainly. agenda? Board and Commission reports. Bridge Street Properties, Villas of Fair Oaks, 1475 West Lees Road, zoning map amendment upon annexation, special use permit for planned development, Preliminary plot of subdivision recommended approval with conditions four to zero. Yes. 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 Christ Presbyterian Church, 805 and 845 East Geneva Road, zoning map amendment, special use permit for place of worship, plot of consolidation, recommended approval with conditions four to zero. Yes. 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 Pecoraro Veterinary Service, 465 East Gunderson Drive, plot of consolidation, recommended approval with conditions four to zero. Yes. 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 Staff reports and recommendations. Approval of the proposals for professional services and independent contractors agreement with BNF Construction Code Services for consultant services not to exceed $75,000 in aggregate during fiscal year 24-25. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Ordinances. An ordinance authorizing the amendment of the annual budget of the Village of Carroll Stream for the fiscal year ending April 30th, 2024. This ordinance amends the previously approved fiscal year 2023-24 budget to provide expenditure authority for items that were not previously anticipated or incorporated within the originally approved budget. Yes. 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 That is ordinance number 2024-04-12. 
an ordinance adopting the annual budget of the Village of Carroll Stream in the amount of $64,866,269 for the fiscal year 25 fiscal year beginning May 1st, 2024 and ending April 30th, 2025. Yes. 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 That is ordinance number 2024-04-13. An ordinance amending chapter 11, article two of the Carroll Stream Code of Ordinances by increasing the number of Class V liquor licenses from 19 to 20, h and Pizza, Inc., doing business as Rosati's Pizza of Carroll Stream, 161 Hiawatha Drive. Yes. 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 That is ordinance number 2024-04-14. An ordinance amending Chapter 6, Article 13, Section 6-13-4 and 6-13-7 of the Carroll Stream Code of Ordinances, Fees and Securities for Construction and New Development. Yes. 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 That is ordinance number 2024-04-15. An ordinance annexing certain property to the village of Carroll Stream, DuPage County, Illinois, 1475 West Lees Road, pin number 01-23-402-016. Yes. 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 That is ordinance number 2024-04-16. An ordinance approving a zoning map amendment to zone property to the R4 multi-unit residence district upon annexation to the village of Carroll Stream, 1475 West Lees Road, pin number 01-23-402-016. Yes. 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 That is ordinance number 2024-04-17. An ordinance approving a special use permit for planned development, Bridge Street Properties, LLC, Villas of Fair Oaks, 1475 West Lees Road. Yes. 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 That is ordinance number 2024-04-18. An ordinance approving a zoning map amendment to rezone property from the B3 General Business District to the OS Office and Service District, Christ Presbyterian Church, 805 and 845 East Geneva Road. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. That is ordinance number 2024-04-19. An ordinance approving a special use permit for a place of worship, Christ Presbyterian Church, 805 and 845 East Geneva Road. Yes. 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 That is ordinance number 2024-04-20. <clears throat> Resolutions. A resolution adopting the 2024-25 Employee Compensation Plan for the Village of Carroll Stream. Yes. 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 That is resolution number 3354. A resolution approving a non-exclusive license agreement with new singular wireless PCS LLC, 1015 Wesley's Road, parcel number 01-24-300-021. Yes. 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 That is resolution number 3355. <coughs> a resolution authorizing a preliminary plat of subdivision, Bridge Street Properties LLC, Villas of Fair Oaks, 1475 West Lees Road. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. That is resolution number 3356. <clears throat> a resolution authorizing a plat of consolidation, Christ Presbyterian Church, 805 and 845 East Geneva Road. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That is resolution number 3357. A resolution authorizing a plat of consolidation, Pecoraro Veterinary Service, 465 East Gunderson Drive. Yes, yes. 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 That is resolution number 3358. New business, reappointment of Anthony Simonetta to the Police Pension Fund Board. Yes. 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 Courtesy review, Housing Trust Group Turnstone Development requests a courtesy review of a proposed 32-unit, three-story affordable senior apartment building at 575 Lees Road, the Han Farm property. Off. 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 Pulling that off. Payment of bills, regular bills, March 19th. 2024 through April 1st, 2024. Yes. 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 Addendum warrants, March 19th, 2024 through April 1st, 2024. Yes. 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 And that yes. concludes the items on the consent agenda, <gasps> Mr. Mayor. Their motion to put those items on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Anselmo. Seconded by Trustee Geezer. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Trustee Berger. Aye. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Fruzzoloni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. Aye. Is there a motion to approve those items by omnibus vote? So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee McCarthy, seconded by Trustee Zalek. Clerk, call the roll, please. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Trustee Berger. Aye. Trustee Zalek. Aye. Trustee Geezer. Aye. Trustee Fruzzoloni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. Aye. So, uh, two, we have uh, K2 is off. It's a courtesy review, Housing Trust Group, Turnstone Development. 
uh, request a courtesy review of a proposed 32-unit, three-story, affordable senior apartment building at 575 Lee's Road, the Han property. I think they're here to make the presentation. They are. <clears throat> Except I thought they were all getting up and leaving. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Mayor and Trustees. So uh, tonight, as the Mayor just said, we have a request for a courtesy review by uh, Housing Trust Group. They are looking at the 3.2-acre property on Lees Road, uh, just east of Coon Road. Um, this is the same property a few years ago. We had a different kind of senior uh, housing uh, development proposed that did not move forward. Um, and, uh, and so we have uh, Jordan Finkelman here with HTG uh, to uh, present uh, some information about their proposed project uh, for this property. As you mentioned, it's a three-story, 32-unit um, affordable senior uh, apartment building. Uh, and so without any further delay, I will turn it over to Jordan. Jordan, come on up. These are the same slides you presented to the Planning Commission. You can just use the arrows. And don't run off the map. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Hi, good evening. I'm Hello. Jordan Finkelman with Housing Trust Group. <clears throat> so just a little bit about Housing Trust Group. Um, we've developed 8,000 multifamily units um, since 1997. Uh, Turnstone Development is our uh, co-developer partner. Uh, they are a uh, local nonprofit. <clears throat> so. This is just a slide kind of showing um, the areas, geographic areas that we're in. Um, Florida, Illinois, uh, Texas, and a few other states here. <clears throat> so Crescent Place, uh, we just finished construction on uh, late last year in Arlington Heights. Uh, this was 40 units, and uh, turned out very successful. Is that the picture of the 40-unit one? That's correct. Okay. And oh, and this is also the same, um, <clears throat> funded by the 9% uh, tax credits by IDA. And that's uh, Illinois Housing Development Authority. Just a photo of the grand opening. And then, uh, yeah, this is a slide here just kind of showing the site that we're talking about tonight, um, the Han family farm uh, on uh, Wise Road. Uh, this is a, a nice kind of uh, map that we've put together just showing the, the different amenities and proximity to um, various different um, community uh, features and community assets. And we're going to start getting into the uh, proposed development and, and what it entails. Um, but just some of the amenities would be security, secured entrance um, with uh, access controls, uh, a fitness center, uh, community room, library area, uh, theater room, outdoor patio, and roof terrace. So these are uh, actual photos from Crescent Place, uh, just showing a representative uh, view of what the amenities would look like at this development, um, with a lot of same kind of um, features that uh, were discussed. Um, so we would be planning to build, to do these, um, you know, uh, these, these amenities at uh, Parkside. And here, here's um, just like more of like the interior uh, photos from the units of uh, bathrooms, uh, kitchen, um, and the living areas. So this is the conceptual site plan that we um, put together with, uh, with our architect. Um, so one really neat feature about this development that we're proposing is to make it a net zero development. And what that entails is that all the energy consumption uh, needs are produced on site, so via solar, solar power, and um, you could see that on on the rooftop um, from the graphic here. <clears throat> the site's about 3.2 acres, and currently zoned R4. Um, the number of units that we're proposing is 32 units, and 30, which is approximately 33,000 gross square feet, uh, within which is three stories in height. 
uh, within the 35 uh, foot height requirement. Um, and then the demographic is for seniors and uh, parking of uh, one, approximately one, one and a quarter per uh, parking spaces per unit. Uh, though we're gonna try and increase that just, you know, if, if we have some additional space, uh, then the plan is to increase the parking. So this is the timeline uh, for the IDA funding that goes with this development. We just submitted our full application a few days ago to IDA. Um, the clarifications period is not shown on here, but that would be in mid-May. That's when IDA will kind of give you their initial uh, feedback on you know, whether or not um, they think that you're gonna move forward. And then the official recommendations would be in mid-July, July 19th. Um, on the right-hand side here, you can see and I apologize for the, uh, the rendering got kind of cut off on the bottom. Um, but on the right-hand side, you can see what the unit mix would look like. 75% of the units would be one bedrooms and 25% uh, two bedrooms with um, the rents ranging from 30 to 60% AMI. And I'll kind of get into what that entails in a minute. 30% uh, units would be 25% of the units, uh, approximately for IDA requirements. Uh, that number can fluctuate uh, a little bit, but uh, not in any case would not exceed 11 units. Um, on the rents, they would range between $621 per month to $1489 per month. And actually, before I continue, I'll, I'll just kind of get into the, since we're discussing the, uh, since I'm talking about the uh, rent levels now, um, the income levels. Um, so the area median income for DuPage County is seventy-seven to eighty-eight thousand uh, dollars for a one and two-person household. Um, so the thirty percent uh, rents would would have, uh, or the, the folks that would qualify for those units um, would be between twenty-three and twenty-six thousand dollars per year in income, and for the sixty percent units, between forty-six and fifty-three thousand per year in annual income. So um, we, I also did, was able to uh, pull some feedback from, uh, from Turnstone's portfolio here. Um, one of the other, uh, or one of the interesting things I thought would be worth mentioning is that uh, um, in two of their properties, um, the first one, Richton Park, 30% of the um, residents there uh, came from the village and another 30% from neighboring communities, so all mostly um, local. And then Forest Park, another asset that they have, uh, was 45% from the village and 10% from neighboring communities. So this is a, um, a model a unit plan for the one and two bedroom units in the development. Um, maybe a little hard to kind of see there, but um, you can see it's, it's got quite a bit going on. As far as um, the layout and, and the finishes, uh, we, we try to do a very thorough job of you know, making the units um, just as nice, if not you know, even nicer than some market rate type product. <clears throat> so this, this slide is um, just kind of showing the net zero program that we're uh, trying to achieve. That's the NGBS advanced uh, net zero certification. And that, that's something that we committed to do with IDA. Um, so that, that puts, if, if we move the development forward, it's, a, um, it's, it's one of the, uh, the assets that, um, you know, is part of the features of the building. So uh, producing the energy and, and just reducing the carbon footprint. So this kind of brings me to the end of the formal presentation, and um, I'm ready to hear uh, any thoughts that you have and appreciate all the feedback. Is the Arlington Heights, how, how old is that building? Uh, uh, six months. Six months. Approximately. How is the uh, going green working? Is the, did you put the solar panels on the roof so, the same? So we didn't, do, um, we didn't do that level. So we did Energy Star. Um, and NGBS, um, one of the more uh, basic certifications. So this would be a much more uh, substantial energy investment into this building. When you say it's secure, a secure prop, what does that mean? 
So that means that you have to have a FOB um, to get into the building and, and actually have approval to, to enter. A gate or into a building? No, just into the building. Oh, so anybody could pull in there, but you have to have the FOB to get the door open? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many parking spaces did you say you had? So right now we have 40 shown in the plan, um, but we're, we're going to attempt, we're, we're going to try. This is the kind of like um, initial site plan, um, and we're developing a site plan to get closer to one and a half parking spaces per unit. So that would bring us 40, to 48. 40 doesn't, doesn't seem like it would, in my mind, it wouldn't work. If everybody owned a car and they had people mm -hmm. come over to visit them, where would they park? There is no like off street parking in that area. That's the problem right. that you have. Mm -hmm. The only place would be east, and that would be in a residential area. And I'm not sure how that would work. But. Along those same lines, how many employees would be working there at, at any given time? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. We would have one full time employee and one part time. I'm a little concerned about the traffic pattern being the high schools right there. Um, that corner tends to get busy as it is, um, and Don, maybe maybe you guys can answer that even better. I mean, are you guys good with what the traffic pattern would be with adding a three-story building to that corner? You know, we could request a traffic study um, to see. Uh, there are you know peak hours that hopefully don't coincide. Uh, with, uh, you know, their comings and goings. Obviously, you've got right across the street a big uh, apartment complex as well. So, um, you know, that's, that's something we could take a look at with the traffic study. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, in looking at the plans for the different, the different room layouts, mm -hmm. um, is there laundry within the facilities or, or within the individual apartments, or you didn't list that as an amenity within the... Right, so there'll be uh, not within the units, but within one on each floor. Okay. Okay. Um, and the activity, uh, will there be organized activities there, or will there just m a more passive use of the, of the facilities there? So for the most part, it will be a more um, passive use with some regular activities planned. Just it wouldn't be like daily activities, um, but... Less, less frequently, there would be, you know, ongoing regular activities well, I was by the manager. Like the mayor and Trustee McCarthy were talking about as far as parking, would these be catered mm -hmm. to the residents only or the community at large, the, the senior community at large? No, just the residents. Okay. Um, um, I see that on the north side there is, um, there is a, a retention or detention pond area. Um, uh, right. Um, is that maybe I should ask staff this? Is that is that a, that's not the existing? That's that's an, a, a new one as compared to the, you know, we've got Jan Smith Park that has the detention area. No, that's a, um, a new detention. It's okay. strictly on site for their site. Um, okay. This is a little bit different than the previous proposal where they tried to incorporate it into Jan Smith. They're um, Okay. And so the entrance and exit will only be Lee's Road, correct? That, that's how we have it shown right now. Um, okay. But that, yeah, I think, I think that's the only. I, I don't know if this is even. There's that parking off of what is that Bedford there? Canterbury. There's like a park little thing right there. I didn't know if that's wide enough to make a street to be kind of like an alternative exit. Well, it might, but then yeah. you just you, you negotiate, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need is a lot of money. Yeah. Right. Right. So exactly. <laughs> I didn't know if that was something looked into or not because I, like the others have said that you know that area does. Now it's at certain times it does get congested. Mm. So, I think that's all I have. Well, <clears throat> do you have any uh, additional? Emerge, I mean, being a senior, being a senior complex, uh, some type of uh, medical emergency. Trying to think how to put it. Services, thank you. Um, we, I mean, we would have the um, just a standard, um, not really services, but like the fibrillator, the fibr 
Same defibrillators, same, yeah. Defibrillators. I'm doing the same thing thank I was you, doing. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, that, um, but for the most part, not, we wouldn't have any, um, uh, we would still have some, you know, some services and, and uh, programs, um, but nothing, nothing that we would hire somebody to come in and, and uh, really organize other than like the, the on-site on uh, management and staff um, running programs. Just wonder if, and I'm not in the business, so it's just a thought, again, because we're, we're talking about seniors, like in the laundry areas, maybe an emergency button of some sort that would automatically call 911, where if, if they're in the laundry room and something happens to them and they didn't bring their phone, they've got a way to get emergency there quick. I mean, there's only mm -hmm. 40 units, so it could be somebody could be alone in that laundry room for a while. Right. I think that's a, a good point. Thank you. Um, speaking of that, uh, I know uh, Clerk Schwarzy's husband, a former paramedic, um, and my mother-in-law lives in a senior complex in, in Carroll Stream, and um, the emergency vehicles are a daily occurrence at these places. Um, have you talked to the fire department about ingress and egress on the how to get in and out not not yet okay i have a couple parts to my question um with it being see uh, senior living who determines the requirements who enforces that after it's built and if somebody who met those requirements was renting a a two-bedroom unit could they have somebody sharing that unit with them who does not meet those requirements? Right. So when we when we close on our on our financing, we sign a land use uh, restriction, a covenant that gets recorded to the property um, over a long term period of time. Um, typically, it's fifty years, and um, that prohibits us from renting to folks under the age of fifty five. Um, to answer your other question about can somebody under that age live there, um, no, it, it would just be 55 plus is my, my understanding. So, so who oversees that going for like 10 years from now, somebody wants to rent it, who's overseeing that to make sure that they're over 55? So our, our management team and compliance team would, you know, run all the uh, background checks and <clears throat> all the um, resident um, applications and, and just reviewing everybody's file and uh, making sure that, that at least on, on, on paper, everything is, uh, you know, is acceptable. Um, there, if somebody does break the rules, break the laws, um, then they are subject to eviction. And you mentioned that um, there'd be a one full-time employee and one part-time employee, what are their roles? So the full-time employee would be the main property manager, and then the part-time employee would be a maintenance tech. And are either of them there 24 hours, or are they just there during business hours? Or So the maintenance tech would be there just during business hours, um, and, and their, their hours may not line up to exactly eight hours per day, but um, throughout the, uh, you know, they, they would have a minimum of 20 hours. Um, per week, generally. So at any of your um, existing properties, because you mentioned that you're in multiple states, um, and I understand this extremely well, because um, my father-in-law, um, before he passed, he was in a um, apartment complex very similar to this in um, Grace Lake. So yeah, your office staff was there from eight to four, and really, they were there just to, you know, answer questions, collect rent, paperwork, help them with any of their housing subsidy. Because I want to say more than half of them were um, subsidized through Lake County. Um, but they also had, like, um, transportation to go to the grocery store once a week, things like that. So do you partner with the townships um, to provide services like that for residents who may not be able to drive. And the reason I ask the question is because my father-in-law was one of the few people who had a car. 
So he was the guy that then went grocery shopping for everyone and then took everyone to their doctor's appointments until I had to take his driver's license away from him. So I just want to make sure that, you know, as people's lives change, um, that there's like opportunities for them to be able to still get to the grocery store because it's not within walking distance of there. So do you partner with the townships or other organizations within the county um, to provide services like that? We, uh, historically we have, um, and again, I just want to be clear that we, we don't have, um, with this program, we don't have the operating budget to have somebody um, running that program continuously. That said, um, if there is a, a certain, an agency that um, would provide that service, um, we'd be more than open to working with them um, to, you know, f facilitate that service to the residents. Yeah, and like I said, with, when, with my father-in-law, with their business, their office manager, that's what they did is they just mm -hmm. knew what the service was and then they published a map, or I'm sorry, a calendar that said this day of the week, you know, the bus comes and goes to Jewel and a couple of other places throughout the month that it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like like what the park district does where they go off site for different excursions. It was primarily to get them to groceries and pharmacy is really what it was. And so they went to, I can't remember, Jewel was one trip. I can't remember the other. Piggly Wiggly, I think, was the other one out there. So people had a choice of where they wanted to go to be able to do their shopping if they did not drive. So um, I was just curious if that's what, if any of your other properties, if you have contracted with the local resources to do that. I'd love to get that um, that information, by the way, just It was to, Library to Lane in, in um, Grays Lake, and this was, it was 10 years ago when he lived there, so I'm not sure if they still offer it, but at the time they did. Um, so it, very similar layout to this, very similar, um, I think it was 40 units also there. Um, so very, very similar layout here. Um, what's your occupancy for your Arlington Heights location that just opened? Um, uh, I, I, I don't know as of, as of this moment, but we did hit 100% uh, lease up in, in December of last okay. year. So okay. uh, we're, we're definitely over 90%, probably should be at least 95. Um, with that few of units, it's, it's kind of like one or, you know, one or two units could right. throw you off 100%. Right, but more than more than 90% occupied. Correct. My only other feedback would be I would be curious what the um, police and fire department have to say about the um, getting in and out of there and getting around there with ambulances, fire equipment, police cars, things like that. So I would just mm -hmm. be curious what they think of your site plan. So the only thing I've I have got. another question. I'm sorry. Were you done? Oh, yeah, I'm good. On the two-bedroom, and I'm just going to tell you that I'm not going to mention any names. But in some of the senior complexes we have, the price got so high, some of the seniors got together and found condos with two bedrooms and worked together. So I'm in my bedroom and they're in their bedroom. And then we have the common area because they all got along where they were at. Is that possible? Is that something that you would condone? Or a two bedroom seems for a, a senior person that would be alone, or just a husband and wife wouldn't need two bedrooms, unless they had, and I don't know, have people sleeping over. I mean, that doesn't, it, I mean, you know kids, right? 55 and over, you said, correct? Right. So, I mean, why would you yeah. need two bedrooms? You just make all singles. Um, so, I, actually, um, this is one of the, the IDA criteria. They actually prefer having a mix of uh, some two bedrooms. Um, so, that that's... You know, that's what it is. That, that's the reason we ended up doing it. Um, that said, uh, we can't condo. We're not allowed to condo units out um, or, or merge uh, leases just for tax credit uh, rules. Um, but I, I do believe that there will be uh, demand. And, um, again, it's only 25% of the units. Yeah, I saw it's only eight, I think, in the whole thing. It, it right. didn't make sense that there would be. Why would you have two bedrooms? That's, that's fine. Yeah. You know, I could see an office. Um, an office? Yeah, my dad had an office. 
John, go ahead. My other concern later on is maintenance of a very large building with with rents that are that are um, depressed on purpose. Um, affordability how do you guys finance the the ongoing maintenance and the first five years is fine but then all of a sudden seven ten fifteen years you're replacing uh, heating units air conditioning units washers dryers painting doing the carpet how does that get paid for so it doesn't turn into a dump so part of our operating budget includes a replacement reserve fund um, which is based off of a per unit um, amount that we will fund into an escrow account every year. Um, additionally, we have an operating deficit reserve as part of our development, development budget. Being a retired police officer, um, in Arlington Heights, is it a keypad or is it a, like a swipe card to gain entry into the secure area? In, in Arlington Heights... I mean, whatever this. it I is, know this, but I believe it's a keypad. And whatever it is, so if it's a keypad, um, I would just, like I said, the police are out there middle of the night. If something happens where nine one one is needed, I would like the police and the fire to have access to the building and not wait for whatever the case to, because back in the day when I was working nights, I'd be ringing all the doorbells to get in and making everybody upset, waking them up. But um, is there? Do you know if there's like an agreement in Arlington Heights about first responders getting in in the middle of the night? Like, do they have a code? I, I believe that there's a, um, gosh, there's a, a special box. term. Uh, Knockbox, that's. Yeah. Well, that's for the right, fire department, right. but, you know, they're always sleeping in the middle of the night and the police are up. We don't have access to the Knox box, So I would just think, you know, since we're out there, we usually re respond first in the middle of the night, you know, to have some sort of, you know, uh, agreement with the police on a code or whatever. So, so the keypad is better? Is well, a keypad would be good, or, I mean, yeah, the key card, keypad would be probably better. So, I mean, because we lose things. And if you give us a, a swipe card or whatever, it might get misplaced. But at least with a keypad, you know, the police will have a code to get in for emergency mm -hmm. services and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't see an issue with that. Huh. That's, that'd be helpful, actually. So the purpose of this is to really just kind of like go through, and I really like the way we do this courtesy review. I think it's wonderful. This way you don't have to spend a lot of money trying to figure out a lot of things and doing site plans and stuff. So you showed us something from Arlington Heights. You got a good idea of the questions we asked. There's no question we need some senior places in Carroll Street. And I, and I think you hit the nail right on the head when you said, 30 to 40 percent of the people will come from Carroll Street. Mm -hmm. We have that, I'm, I met that that question asked all the time. Are we going to have more senior places? Are we going to have more senior places? We have a mm -hmm. couple of big senior places, but the affordability just isn't there for a family, especially if somebody passes away and the wife is alone, she'd like to stay in the area where she's at, or the husband would like to stay in the area. So that would give them an opportunity. Uh, other than that, I think you got some things to think about. I think that the trustee Zalek hit the nail on the head. They have to be able to get in. There's no question. I mean, because mm -hmm. uh, these firemen will break the door down if they have to you get to save somebody. Well, I mean, their job is. The police to are much gentler save. than the firemen. <laughs> the firemen like to have axes and stuff. We <laughs> fry the door open, maybe, but we just want. I would just want someone to be able to gain entry in the middle of the night for an emergency. Exactly, without a lot of confusion and action. A, a kind of a, a silly, silly question more than anything. Is this going to be a, a pet friendly or non pet friendly? And the reason I ask that is then what area are you going to designate for for pets if it is pet friendly? Yeah, that that is a great question. I I, I uh, that one I, I'm a little stumped on. I think generally we do allow pets in our developments. Um, we don't have a dog park shown here on our plan. Um, I think that's something that we could pretty easily incorporate. Have so. you ever made a presentation like this before? Um, not quite like this, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is different. I mean, a little different, the, a little different. I mean, yeah. really, I mean, that's the whole idea of having a courtesy review where you could, mm -hmm. we could ask those questions and you could ask questions. <laughs> so.
Well, oh, good. Thank you. Well, good. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Take your laptop too. Officers, <clears throat> yeah, we're doing report off. Oh, Trustee Berger. Oh, wait a second, Trustee Ansamo. Almost forgot. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, here we go. I got forgotten already. It's not even been a year. I <laughs> uh, hope uh, all, everyone had a nice Easter. Um, I do have to wish Trustee Prusiloni a belated happy birthday. Boy, you didn't put enough on Facebook publicly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I do have a question for Trustee Berger, though, before I go further. So Groundhog Day was in February. I want to know if you saw your shadow. Yeah. Because the S word has been talked about coming this week. So Tomorrow. Just want to know. It is entirely possible that we will still see snow, but winter did end on the first day of spring. We believe so. <laughs> Do you project a six week further out of spring? <laughs> no, winter already started, but it could still snow. <laughs> There's the S word. Yes. Um, I do want to congratulate Trustee McCarthy on the Relay for Life tournament. I'm not going to go further on that. I'll wait, let him go into details. But what a honor it was to be part of your committee and be part of such an awesome event. But that's all I'm going to say about that. And the last thing I want to say is uh, to residents in Carroll Stream driving around, please be mindful of your speeds driving through our neighborhoods. And that ends my report. No, we've done already. That was weird. Samuel, Trustee Berger. Thank you. Um, I also hope that everybody had a, a nice Easter. I certainly did, uh, because on Easter, uh, in case anyone in Carol Stream didn't hear me yelling in my family room, um, the Purdue Boilermakers. Chicken people? No, not the chicken people. The the mighty University of the Purdue Boilermakers made the Final Four. First time since I was skinny and owned a comb, and I was screaming, which I don't do often, but I was definitely celebrating, and I scared both dogs, even the one that can't hear. Um, I was also going to mention something about our bags tournament, and I'm, I'm absolutely sure that uh, Trustee McCarthy is going to give an update. Um, I just wanted to pre-clarify something that while it is a, um, a team effort, this tournament would not exist without the efforts of Trustee McCarthy and his lovely bride, Linda. And uh, I will let him share the success when it is his turn, and that is the end of my report. Thank you, Trustee Berger. You weren't the only one pulling for him. I was afraid you might hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First off, I know the mayor thanked staff and everybody who did their part in our budget process. And I also want to thank everybody for their hard work and diligence um, and doing a great job. Uh, we're, and we reached our budget. Um, today being April 1st, I was going to quit, um, but, or, you know, step down and resign. But you know, I don't want anybody to think that I want to step down, so it was an April Fool's joke. I was also going to switch all the nameplates, but <laughs> Bill, our village manager, scolded me and said that uh, I shouldn't do that. So happy April Fool Fool's. I um, hope everybody had a happy and blessed Easter. Um, I'm suddenly becoming a UConn fan. I don't know why. <laughs> but um, And just keep our first responders and military in our thoughts and prayers. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee Zalek. <laughs> yeah, I would like to, uh, on the, uh, the advice of counsel, I would like to accept your resignation. <laughs> nice last comments. Wow. Take your side with you. Nice to be alone. Well played, Mr. Rhodes. Well played. Can't take a joke, huh? Okay. Trustee <laughs> Geezer. Thank you very much. Just a couple things. Um, 
um, <clears throat> the parade committee's got a whole lot of uh, fundraisers coming up, so please pay attention to the, their social media. They have uh, a fundraiser on April 18th at Augustino, May 8th at the Village Tavern, and May 19th at Culver's, plus they've got a whole lot more planned. So uh, pay attention to that. Library has a blood drive coming up on April 25th. Please, uh, if you're able, consider that. And um, is Brianna gonna speak tonight? Okay, good. Because we've got, well, otherwise I would mention that we, we, we're still looking for donations for the Thursday night concerts. And that's my report. Very good, Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Is there any? coordination here between all three restaurants are all like within sight view of each other well we might want to talk to community development and uh, past boards about where restaurants were all located I mean I think that was that was yeah. pretty good yeah. I mean that's yeah. uh, you know yeah trustee for as long thank you mr. mayor um, I also want to um, wish everyone, hope that everyone had a, a great Easter. Um, spring is here. It doesn't feel like it. Um, I am, the only reason I'm a Purdue fan right now is because there, there is the potential that my husband might win some money in a pool. Um, he's going against a 99-year-old woman who's got UConn, so it's going to be interesting. Um, that's the only reason? That's the only reason. Yes, the only reason. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's snow on your property. Um, and that's fine because I'm actually going to be in Phoenix, coincidentally, when the Final Four is happening. We will not be going to the Final Four, but we'll be going through the airport tomorrow. And I'm, I have no doubt that it's going to absolutely be insane around the Phoenix area this, um, this coming week. Um, so I'm going to miss the snow. Sorry. Uh, it'll be 84 degrees in Arizona tomorrow when I land. So just so you, you're aware. Um, great job on the budget. We had long budget meetings, and again, staff knocked it out of the park. Um, to our village manager, Bill Homer, great job. This is your first official budget cycle. It was very seamless. It was very smooth. Um, just great job to staff. Thank you for all the time and dedication that you put into it. Um, thank you to our Sikh community for coming out tonight. Um, this is always an important one. Uh, proclamation for us to um, to have every April. So I appreciate that um, we had the Sikh community come in and speak to us um, again this year. Um, I think it's very important to be aware of of the um, the message that they that they bring, which is always very inspiring to all of us. Um, the only other thing that I just wanted to mention, I know that that. Brianna is going to talk about the Thursday night concerts, but I just wanted to say thank you to the village board. Um, again, the village board is going to be sponsoring the um, Pride concert, which is June 20th. Yeah, it's, it feels like late, late June. Um, but just thank you so much to the village board um, for again, jumping on board. This will be our third year sponsoring the concert. Um, and I think it's very important that the entire board is is in this because it's very important to our community. It's a great concert. It we bring in people to the concert that we may never see at a, at a Thursday night concert. So very much looking forward to that. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I will go ahead and end my report. Thank you, Trustee Frisoli. Trustee McCarthy. Well, I agree with everybody. Everything everybody said, mm -hmm. instead of doubling up on everything. Um, and, and guys, thank you for, for, for trying to have me lay claim to uh, the bags tournament, but it's a, it's a big we, it's our committee. Um, pretty much everybody in here in some way, shape or form affected it. Um, we finish up on Sunday with a kids tournament and um, as long as the kids tournament goes well, we will bypass $85,000 this year. <laughs> means in over eight years we have all uh, donated over two hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars everything that comes in goes right back out um, expenses and sites that the, the committee takes care of or the sponsors take care of um, of course our big sponsors uh, Chrissy's flood brothers the mayor new tradition funeral services aqua landscapes and uh, iron branch 
um, I was getting there, and, and a committee member, both committee member and, uh, and trustee, Berger Strategic Communications. Um, he did, a, he, the last few years, Jeff has done all the, the graphics on everything, and he's much, much, much better at it than I am. And he can spell, so that's always a good thing. Um, it was a wild year. I had, I had questions whether we'd break last year, because last year was amazing. And um, eight days in, we knew we were going to run past last year. And then uh, the local businesses were amazing. Um, restaurants and bars who are competition to Chrissy's not only donated, they showed up. They played, they donated, they came and bought raffle tickets, uh, donated raffle prizes. It was insane. Um, of course, our village staff had a night that we packed the place, um, one of our high nights, as it, as it always is. Um, and it's just, it, yeah, Linda and I do all the back work, but, but without every, pretty much everybody up here and one, you know, Mary's been on it since day one. Um, Joe and Jeff joined us. Uh, John's always right there with us. Frank's been here since day one, and his question is always, what do you need? You'll get it. Um, and, I, and I thank you all for that, to, to make this a, just an amazing, it's turned into a community event, and it's just the, it's the coolest thing to just watch people come in and hang out have a good time and accidentally raise a whole lot of money for about half of it goes to uh, American Cancer Society. The rest is split between local charities that, that touch Carroll Stream. Um, the food pantries that service Carroll Stream are each going to get money. Breakfast with Babies, the Knights of Columbus, uh, the Carroll Stream Parks Foundation, the Dominic Savarino Foundation, Violet's Kitchen. These are people who are doing stuff that affect people's lives right now, not somebody from 10 states away. Um, they're feeding people. Um, they're making sure kids can go to college. They're making sure kids can, can do activities no matter what their financial situation is. And, and with the Knights, they're pretty much doing anything anybody needs. Uh, Breakfast with Babies is supplying diapers and formula to new parents uh, in the area. This is all stuff that, this is how it should be taken care of. The community takes care of it. Instead of people asking for government handouts, no, we should all just work together uh, we grew up that the churches and the local communities would, would do everything they can to help. We, we grew up with the, the, the Legion and the VFWs all getting together and doing stuff. And, and I'm a big believer that, that that's how you get stuff done because we're all neighbors, we're friends, we're, we're community. And you do it together. And just more than anything, everybody, thank you very much. And in my report. Well, I can say thank you because it's been a pleasure to work with you. And I'm looking forward to doing it again next year, the same as we have. We have to have somebody to lead it. Yes, everybody jumped in and helped, and the staff got together and did their night. But how many teams did you have? 190. 190 teams. That's phenomenal. I mean, and the Chrissy staff was over the top nice. Fantastic. And that helps bring in more money, and they keep pushing for more tickets sold. So it takes a team. What is that, Berger? What does it say? One team, Carol's dream, huh? Absolutely. Uh, we got that going. We threw these right at there. the uh, uh, parade last year. I got enough for next year, too. So <laughs> we'll be throwing them again. Better than candy. We like to let the people of Carroll Stream know we're one team because we are one team. Amen. So thank you very much for what you've done. Madam Clerk, are Brianna first? Brianna. Brianna. Good. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to remind residents that yard waste collection begins this week. So on your regular garbage day, um, feel free to put out glass, uh, grass clippings, leaves, and any other yard waste. Just remember that it should be in a 32-gallon container or yard waste bags. And then, of course, don't forget your yard waste stickers. <clears throat> and as a few of you have mentioned, event Planning is well underway, so I'm excited to announce our first event of the year is the Geek Fest on Saturday, June 15th over at Town Center, so save the date for that. And then we also have six concerts that we are looking forward to this summer. And our concerts are funded entirely through sponsor contributions, and we are so close to our goal. We have received $23,000 so far. Um, almost there, so if you are a business in town looking to expand your outreach, this would be a great opportunity for you. 
Um, if you're interested, there is information on our website, social media, or you can contact the village directly by emailing concertseries at carolstream.org. Uh, and I'm excited to uh, share more details about all of our events in the upcoming months. Thank you. Good job. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I, too, want to congratulate Trustee McCarthy and your whole team and all the volunteers for such a successful bags tournament. It was a lot of fun, and it's just unbelievable how big it's become. So thank you for all your hard work. And just wanted to let everyone know that a couple environmental events coming up in honor of Earth Month in April, April 27th. Greg and I are hosting a cleanup of the Great Western Trail again, uh, the Carol Stream portion from Gary to Schmail. So if anybody's interested, uh, Public Works is, uh, has kindly offered to donate the gloves, the grabbers, a dolly, and the bags. And then they will pick up all the garbage that we leave out along the trail and the, green, and the orange bags, the Public Works will come get that. So it's just a nice way to keep our trails looking nice. That's April 27th. Let me know if you're, you'd like to help. Um, and then also the Pond and Stream Sweep on May 4th. Um, Greg and I are hosting the team that's going to clean up Town Center Basin. We usually get enough people to do both the Town Center Basin Pond as well as the pond right behind there. So, um, so that's always a fun time. That's May 4th in the morning. And other than that, just wanted to mention that we all have the emails about getting our Statement of Economic Interest done. They are due by May 1st. So if you don't want the county clerk coming after you, just get that submitted. Trustee Zalek. And other than that, um, shop and dine Carol Stream. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Rhodes, our village attorney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have uh, one, one quick thing tonight. Um, there are three bills in the legislature that uh, deal with crime free housing. And uh, as you know, the village has a crime free housing ordinance, uh, which has been very successful. And if, in fact, uh, these bills uh, pass, uh, one of them has already uh, passed out of committee in the Senate, and there's two sitting in the, uh, in the House, um, they will prohibit municipalities from any longer having crime-free housing ordinances. Uh, and, of course, they uh, um, do preempt home rule. Um, so the village would lose its ability to have a crime-free housing ordinance along with any other communities within the state of Illinois. Uh, the um, uh, Illinois Municipal League has uh, put out some information about it. There's a link on their page uh, to, to go ahead and uh, do a witness slip for the, uh, for the hearings. It's very simple to do. You click a couple of uh, boxes and just fill your name in indicate your opposition uh, to, the, uh, to the bill. Um, but um, I think it is important to maintain uh, that type of regulation. Uh, you know, it works, um, but apparently there are some people who think that it's a little overbearing. So just wanted to point that out, and um, with that, I'll end my report. Do you have any good news? <laughs> It's sad because no, we very rarely get good news from Springfield. Exactly right. Yeah. Yep. Mr. Homer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, on the heels of what Attorney Rhodes mentioned, if anybody needs help walking through witness slips, please call me and I will, I will walk through them with you um, and help, help you get them filed. I've already done, done some from administration, but um, if, you, if you need assistance, please call me. Um, I want to mention Carol Stream Rotary Food Drive is April 13th. They are still accepting donations and will do so uh, until the 12th. You can drop off at Park District locations here at the Village Hall, uh, District 93 Schools, Glenbar North, and at the Carol Stream Public Library. Those donations go to food pantries that service Carol Stream and both uh, Milton and Wayne Townships, uh, and also the Humanitarian, uh, humanitarian Service Project. Um, as we came out of the month of March, uh, which is Social Work Month. Uh, it's a time to celebrate the profession of social work. I just want to take a minute and uh, recognize and thank our social services unit for the terrific work that they do here in the community. Um, and I appreciate, on behalf of staff, uh, all the kind comments about the budget, but I really want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, the finance director, John Baytek, and his finance team uh, really do the heavy lift on the budget. So uh, I want to thank John and the finance team. Really, really did the, the heavy lift. So thank you. That's the end of my report. That's it. That's it. Well. 
I have no report. Motion to adjourn. We'll go down. Executive session. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to go into closed session. Uh, did we put that in the paper? We have it on the, on the agenda, and we are going to an executive session for Section 2C5 of the Open Meetings Act, uh, acquisition of real property. Uh, there will be no action taken after the executive session, so it will just be to go in, a motion to be go in, and then to adjourn directly from executive session. So moved. All in favor? Oh, call the roll. Trustee Anselmo. Aye. Trustee Bridger. Aye. Trustee Zalik. Aye. Trustee Kieser. Aye. Trustee Frizzoni. Aye. Trustee McCarthy. Aye. Meeting is adjourned.